Hello guys and gals, me Mudahar. Has your router been hacked? Well, it's actually less likely than you think. Now, I like making these videos, and before we start off with, I don't really make these videos to fearmonger or do anything. I like to really show you some cool things about the world of cybersecurity, about keeping your information safe. And frankly, you know, if you can learn something new and keep yourself safe moving on day from day, what's the harm? I don't believe in ignorance as bliss. Ignorance just causes dumb things to manifest. So again, stay educated, stay hydrated. Code Sog, by the way and have a good time going forward. Now this video comes at you from a couple things that I was looking into. For instance, lately I was actually following the world of cyber attacks. As you all know, things have been pretty uh, spooky in terms of international relations between various countries. Europe, we're looking at you. But uh, because of this, cyber attacks have happened all, all over the world, okay? And a lot of them have come from nation states, okay? Big nation states with tons of resources. So one thing that I was looking at was this nice posting by the actual French space commander, Michel Friedling, who was talking about the actual cyber attacks against satellite networks in Europe. So here's a little excerpt that I want to show you just real quick. It's in French, but they got English subtitles. Un réseau satellitaire qui couvre notamment l'Europe et notamment l'Ukraine qui a euh, été victime d'une attaque euh, cyber et donc avec un des dizaines de milliers de terminaux euh, qui ont été rendus inopérants euh, immédiatement après cette attaque. Oh man, did this man just say thousands of terminals attack? Jesus Christ, that is spooky. Now, the attack was headed towards Viasat Incorporation, which if you don't know Viasat, they provide satellite incorporated to a lot of governmental agencies, defense agencies, and whatnot. They actually have a lot of space programs too. This is a big organization, all right, that deals a lot with satellite infrastructure. So again, the way that the world is connected is through various methods, right? We obviously have undersea cabling, but the internet is not entirely connected in cables. In a lot of ways, we actually have satellite infrastructure structure. In this case, it was the KSAT satellite, which is a high throughput telecommunication satellite, which is of course owned by Viasat. They provide a lot of broadband internet access to Europe and also parts of the Middle East. So again, this is like the general coverage that they have over here that you can see on the internet. And again, this is a satellite based internet, you know, service. Again, you can't connect the entire world through cables. Wherever things are remote, you're obviously going to be satellites to reaching them. You're obviously going to be using things that basically is chew the need for cables, right? Of course, sometimes satellite infrastructure can be expensive and, uh, well, actually in a lot of cases it is, but also satellite infrastructure can also mean you get slower internet on average, but it does cover areas that you can't usually do via traditional, you know, networking methods, right? So basically even in remote parts of the United States or even in Canada, where you're obviously not going to be able to cable or there's just not enough people to warrant that kind of an infrastructure being actually built around them, you're probably reliant on satellite-based internet, okay? There's a lot of people that sell satellite-based modems. You just plug them in, they get internet from the satellite, and you connect it via ethernet to your actual system to get the internet from. Simple explanation right there. Now, it seems as though a lot of these things were actually attacked, okay? Somewhere around February 24th, a cyber attack rendered Viasat KSAT modems inoperable in the Ukraine and parts of Europe, okay? So again, what actually happened was an ELF binary, a malicious ELF binary known as Acid Rain, was basically sent around. Now, this was apparently a wiper malware, which isn't, again, as common as you would expect. Now, Acid Rain's malicious binary was very simple, okay? It would wipe the file system of various storage devices. Had Acid Rain gained root privileges, it would then recursively overwrite and delete non-standard files in a file system, okay? So effectively, it was a simple malware, well, I, I, I shouldn't say simple, but the actual objective was rather simple. It wanted to delete fucking everything, okay? I guess that's basically the right way to put it. Now, there's been efforts put by security researchers such as Reverse Mode who actually dumped the firmware of these Surfbeam 2 modems that are used by Viasat. So Surfbeam 2 is actually a DOCSIS protocol that's actually been adapted by Viasat for these specific modems, right? These specific, you know, consumer and devices. According to reverse mode, this is an attacked bin, all right, so attacked one. This is the firmware from an attacked router, an infected one, and this is from a fixed router, okay? So this is basically with official firmware, actual updates, and fixed, okay? So the actual operating systems, if you're looking at their actual, you know, data inside here, this is, of course, as you can see, a fixed, a proper router, and over here on the left, this is definitely, obviously, malicious, okay? It has been attacked, it is doing naughty things, and you should not trust it. If this is on your network, remove it and make sure you can fix anything else that it might have attacked or infected or corrupted in any fashion. 
Now, initially, before even dumping these files, uh, Reverse Mode actually looked into this and provided their own theory, which is actually very plausible. In fact, this is basically close to what appears to have happened. Subsequent investigation and forensic analysis identified a ground-based network intrusion by an attacker exploiting a misconfiguration in a VPN appliance to gain remote access to the trusted management segment of the KSAT network. An attacker moved laterally through the trusted management network to a specific network segment, used to manage and operate the network, and then used his network access to execute legitimate targeted management commands on a large number of residential modems simultaneously. Specifically, these destructive commands overrode key data in flash memory on the modems, rendering the modems unable to access the network, but not permanently unusable. Now, of course, what turns out in this analysis is that basically it seems like Viasat Surfbeam 2 firmware, effectively the operating system on the router itself, seems as though that a lot of these, like, uh, it seems very close that this malware is basically abusing the TR-069 protocol, specifically the app installation feature on it, not to overwrite the firmware, but to run binaries alongside without ever even overwriting the firmware to begin with, right? And basically, it wasn't an implication that these were being abused, but uh, overall, the security of these firmwares, the security of these routers were actually very uh, sassy-wussy, if you will, okay? Or, or I guess in boring speak, uh, not good. Now, to understand what TR-069 is, just for very simple terms, is it's basically also a identified as CWMP or CPE WAN management protocol. And the general idea is, is that basically it allows remote and very safe configuration of just network devices. So I guess the simplest way to put it is uh, you have an ACS, which is the auto configuration server, and then you have various amounts of modems or routers, or technically what they're called is CPEs, which are customer premise equipment. So again, it could just be a set top box for your television, you know, things like voice over phones, modems, routers, gateways, whatever, whatever exists in the world of network connection. So effectively what happens is when the device is connected, it's wired up, it'll basically start looking for an ACS URL, which is effectively the internet address for the auto configuration server. Once it connects to the auto configuration server, this connection allows the ACS to then modify the consumer, you know, premise equipment. Again, that modem or set top box. Again, it's designed so that as soon as it connects, it takes a few seconds for it to provision, for it to actually configure itself, using the TR-069 protocol. And this basically allows it so that, you know, your ISP or a lot of people who can then remotely manage that device instead of sending down engineers or whatnot, okay? It's basically a safe, reliable, quick, easy way for remote management on the ISP all right, or the network management to your end, okay? So you don't have to sit down and manually enter a million things. The ACS can do it all for you. Now, again, I'm not here to fear monger the audience out of this or anything. I, again, the actual premise of this title is very true. There's a lot of ways that you can check if your router has been infected by hackers, for instance. One of them is simply going to like fsecure.com. A lot of, you know, security websites will offer a router check, which basically if you just click their button, they'll do a quick check to see if you have any DNS hijacking going on. All right, so you can view that I basically have not been hijacked by anybody. My DNS is totally fine. All right, this is one of the ways that hackers can infect your router. And typically when they infect your router, some things that you'll notice is your internet may get slow. All right, your router may end up be pro may, may end up having high CPU usage because it's doing a lot of nefarious things that you normally wouldn't let it do. And sometimes you'll notice that even when you're browsing uh, on websites, right, because your DNS has been modified, you may be getting weird advertisements I mean, in some capacities, if you live in China, for instance, behind the Great Firewall, your DNS is automatically routing you so that you're never able to resolve to places that the government may censor, right? But in a lot of cases, it's used for phishing or providing malicious, you know, advertising or just malicious, you know, data collection in general. And so that's a good way to check. But router malware can exist in a lot of cases, right? And there's two examples that I want to talk about. Now, for a lot of people wondering how common, again, is the router infection? So again, it's not exactly the most common thing in the world, but there are two examples you have to really think of in your head. Now, there are examples like the Mirai botnet, which if you don't know what the Mirai botnet was, basically, instead of targeting, you know, sort of a lot of higher end devices or secure devices, right, which would take a lot of time and resources, they were targeting IoT devices. Remember, a botnet is effectively a command server talking to hundreds, thousands, 
hundreds of thousands of devices and relaying simple instructions, right? The larger your botnet is, you know, in scale, the larger your um, the, the larger your attacks can basically be. So what they were doing were they were targeting IoT devices. So devices like baby monitors, devices like lights, devices that were internet connected, but not necessarily secure. So a lot of these internet IoT devices run on the ARC processor, which are basically embedded processors that run like embedded versions of Linux on it, okay? So they're not exactly exactly sophisticated secure designs, but they're just internet connected. So effectively what the Mirai botnet was doing was it was actually seeking out via Telnet basically all these unsecured devices. It would find them and connect to them. And I think they had somewhere around 61 different passwords, just 61, that were basically used to help configure the devices. So to understand how this worked, were when these devices are made, they're configured, right? So they have like a basic login command. So effectively what would happen is they would connect to this, they would log in using 61 different combinations of username or password. So when you buy a router, when you buy like a small device, okay, the configuration on it could be something as like, the username could literally be admin, and and the password could literally be password, okay? So it's advisable when you get a router or a modem to quickly change that as much as you can, all right? You never want something default at all on your router. It means that anybody that connects to your house's Wi-Fi and you haven't actually changed the router administrator password, they could open up their smartphone, they could connect to your Wi-Fi if you give them the Wi-Fi password and you have no idea what your Wi-Fi is like. They could literally type in the gateway and actually log into your router right there and do a million more malicious things than you would expect. They could even change your Wi-Fi password on you. They could literally look at what's going on in the logs if you're not careful about changing the password on your router devices. And back in 2016, they were using it against massive hosting services. And to the point where even the source code for the botnet was actually leaked online. Now, of course, the FBI got involved, plenty of agencies did, but this was just one example. After this, we moved into VPN filter, which actually has some similarities to the current attacks of today. VPN filter, for those of you who don't know, actually ended up infecting about half a million consumer routers all over the world, okay? So effectively, what VPN filter would do when it would survive reboots and various different things, even had, even had kill switches on it for crying out loud, if people started to detect it or whatnot. So what was happening with VPN filter was that the actual infection started in multiple stages. So typically what would happen was they would look through various router security vulnerabilities on devices. Of course, most people may not even update their routers, okay? They may not even have them auto updated. They may be running older firmwares on their routers. So effectively what would happen is stage one would jump in, it would involve a worm, it would basically attack the device's Chrome tab. And at this point, the, the actual malware could stay on the device even after you reboot it and it could then reinfect it later on. After stage one was done, it would then send URLs and it would find and install the stage two malware. The stage two would then be the actual malware, which would include all the code that would launch out all the functions and execute all the instructions. And then optionally, it would jump into stage three. And then it would start sniffing network data, start gathering credentials, and then basically do all disgusting things. Then it would exfiltrate the data using the Tor network and also encrypting it. So basically they were trying to really cover their tracks and steal as much as they could. Now, of course, everyone basically involved in the company said that all you have to do is factory reset and whatnot. Now, for a lot of people wondering, uh, how do I know my router is infected? Like I showed you earlier, if you haven't been DNS hijacked, you're probably not actually really infected. But there's a couple things that you should start learning about your router, okay? So I'm gonna show you real quick. First things first, you have to figure out what your actual router's IP address is. So I'm on Linux, so I type in IP adder, but if you're on Windows, you open up a terminal and you type in IP config. I think you can also use IP adder if you're on Mac OS as well, but typing this command in, you get a bunch of network interfaces. What's important for me is my ethernet interface. Now here you can see my IP address is 192.168.50.214. You're not going to be able to hack me with this IP. This is an internal IP address. It's only important for me and any connection on my system. So typically your actual like IP address will be like, in that case, since it was 192.168.50, the IP gateway will be 0.1. Okay, it'll be the first node on the entire range. So typically we're going to type in uh, 192.168.50.1, hit enter, and it takes me to my Asus router. So again, this is a router, not a modem. So to get real Khan Academy on you guys, all right, I'm gonna just get paint real quick. Let me just get a paint tool. 
So in a lot of ways, let me make a quick diagram for you on good old GIMP right here. For instance, this is you, right? This is you and your computer, right? This is your system right here, blah, 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 blah. Typically, this is the internet. I'm gonna make a little glow, blah, 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 blah. That's the internet, right? Now, of course, between your computer, you're not directly connected, obviously. You have what would be either a modem. So this will be a modem right here. This will be your ISP provided modem, the router that your internet company gives you. A lot of people may choose to have a router behind the ISP. You know, something you'd buy from the store, maybe like a gaming router or just something that's more higher end than whatever they provide you. Again, these all have their gateway IPs. So remember those in particular. And again, look, I'm making a video for you guys. Okay, don't judge my art skills. I was never good at it, but hey, it is what it is. So again, back to the whole router here. Once you've signed into your actual router and you actually like connected into it, you'll notice that right over here, I got a bunch of options. You may not understand a lot of these options and it's advisable that you understand things like QoS, things like analyzing your traffic. A lot of routers will have different things to them, right? But what you're really looking for here are things like your system log. You may not know how to read this, but it's a good idea for you to understand specifically on your router if something shady is going on. For instance, around every month, I look through this here and there just to see that nothing shady is happening. No weird connections are going on. Nothing is really outlandish, all right? But the other thing is actually also making sure that your system is updated. A lot of routers will provide you a way to update your actual firmware. Like right up here, mine says firmware version. Again, mine is an Asus router. You may have a different one and it's advisable you check what your firmware is on that router. Sometimes we'll have an auto firmware upgrade. I typically leave these off, but you can leave them on if you want. I typically leave them off just because I update myself to make sure no shenanigans happen, okay? But then what's really important is the administration section. And a lot of these routers will provide the ability for you to have remote administration. And that's something you always want to leave disabled. It might sound cool, but remotely giving administration tools and connecting them to the internet is exactly how people's routers get hacked in the first place. Never use these features. If you're one of those people that has like a network attack storage, network attached storage, and you're actually using it to like, you know, stream movies outside your internet, like outside your, you know, like local internet. Like, let's say you have a Plex server, right? And you want to watch that movie that you may or may not have done. Look, I'm not judging you for doing that. Okay. I'm sure that's between you and God, <laughs> but I don't care. But let's say that you have things like that connected to the internet. You don't want to connect anything with remote administration over the internet. That's just a bad, that's literally a fire waiting to happen. Okay. Don't do that. Don't let it happen. So if you disable web access from WAN, for instance, you won't be able to use with the Asus router app, Alexa devices, or IFTTT. These are small prices to pay for security. Make sure that these actual settings are applied. I literally, you know, I enabled it and disabled it to show you. But don't give yourself remote connection, okay? Keep that shit local, all right? Come on. You may not have a fancy router, which in a lot of cases, you can actually dig further into your home network. Again, you have to find these IPs for yourself and you'll have to come across your actual modem, okay? From the actual ISP. And some of these services will be more limited. Like they may not allow you to like actually modify or update the firmware, but these are some things that you have to understand going in, okay? You wanna make sure any form of remote connection that allows you to remotely connect from the internet to manage your router is disabled. If you wanna manage your router, be on site, be at your house and manage it that way, okay? Because these are basic, simple tips that I'm giving you. There are two great tips. Disable remote management because you don't need it, all right? Especially if you're not actually remote managing, and I know most of you aren't, and make sure those default passwords are changed, okay? Very simple shit, very simple ways. So again, I wanted to really sit down and explain a giant router hack that happened, and I also wanted to raise awareness for something that could happen to you, okay? Look, these things aren't super commonplace, all right? But at the end of the day, they can happen. And when it comes to cybersecurity attacks, sometimes it's always basically us being absolutely surprised by a hack that's happened, okay? You know, we've seen it time and time again with, you know, Lock 4 j and various other attacks. You only ever realize the scope of them until after they've happened. And really the best practice is keeping yourself safe so when it does happen, you know that you are at least as secure as you can be, okay? You have mitigated as much risk. It does not take much effort to stay on top of this, okay? But once you do, it's a lot of peace of mind, okay? Remember, the data you produce is more valuable than you, unfortunately, in the cyberpunk 
cyberpunk reality we live in. And there are a lot of people out there vying to get your information specifically for finance reasons, or they're vying to infect your computer for botnet crypto mining reasons. Of course, sometimes it can all be financially motivated. And you don't want to be a pawn. You don't want to be infected. Stay safe. Stay on the internet. And that being said, ladies and gentlemen, I got some more videos to make. If you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Dislike it. If you dislike it, I am out.